Hey everyone, it's probably Sid here. In today's video, I will be sharing a few tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years playing Minecraft PvP and PvP related games. By no means am I an expert, but I've developed some skills in my time playing this game. And I think I'm at a point now where I'm able to share some knowledge and not look like, you know, I've got no idea what I'm talking about. And to be honest, I think in some of my videos I do tend to look like that, but that's okay. With that being said, let's jump straight into the tutorial. So the first thing that you'd want to consider probably is the client that you use. Um, I'd like to point out that you should not be using a hacked client, obviously, um, if you wish to get better at PvP, but I suppose you're free to do so if you wish. Um, I feel like hacking removes the fun from the game. Um, that's just my opinion. So if you are looking to play legitimately, I would recommend one of the following clients. We've got the Luna client, we've got the Bad Lion client, we've got the PvP Lounge client, and we've got Custom Forge clients. Most servers, apart from a couple, don't officially endorse any specific client, but the majority of clients that I listed tend to respond pretty quickly to changes in the rules by large servers, so you're at a little risk of getting banned. Um, I would say that I believe a Luna client is still bannable on Mineplex for um, whatever reason, but you'll get kicked immediately if you're on Luna client. I think they're able to detect that somehow, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but with that being said, the only 100% safe way is to use the regular vanilla Minecraft launcher. But I would still recommend using a PvP client, and out of the ones I've mentioned, my client of choice is the Luna client, which you'll know if you've seen my videos. Um, it gives you mods such as the CPS counter, um, which shows you how many clicks that you're performing per second. A keystrokes mod, which shows just, well, it just shows which keys that you're pressing. Um, so it can help for some of the other techniques that I'll talk about later, like such as W tapping. Um, but anyway, it just has a vast collection of like PVP related mods. Um, and admittedly, the other clients on the list do also have these mods. So really it's up to your personal preference on which you want to use. Um, and I use the Luna client mainly because the customization is simple and it runs very smoothly on my PC. And it's also, as we speak, it's also the most popular of the clients that I've listed. But there was a time when Badline was, um, you know, Badline was king. And I used Badline for a long time. And yeah, I was actually quite late to switch to Luna. And that's just because for a long time Badline ran better on my PC. So I just stuck with it until Luna was able to perform better because for the longest time like Luna just didn't give me the same FPS that Bad Lion did but clearly they've done something and now Luna runs extremely smooth and I only really use Bad Lion for the replay mod and one other thing obviously there's been controversy around the Bad Lion client um I don't know too much about it I'm fairly certain that the like management involved in the whole situation were replaced but again, I'm not too sure. Um, that being said, uh, the, I've seen cases of like, you know, people hurling abuse at people who use the bad line client. Um, I think that's a bit silly. Like, you know, it, just because you use the client doesn't mean you support the um, the people who, you know, did the bad thing. Um, I just use Luna, like I say, because I currently like it more. But if you want to use bad line, you know, don't worry about other people hurling abuse and whatnot. It, it's just a game at the end of the day. Um, but anyway, I got kind of sidetracked there. Um, so I guess I should probably talk about PvP Lounge. Um, I haven't really used it much. I have a little experience with it, but not much. But it just has the same mods as Bluna and Bad Lion. Um, so I won't say too much more about it. But if you want to give it a go, the link is in description. Perhaps the most unique of the options here is a custom forge client and I have a couple of friends who do go down this route and you know it's a good route. Um, I guess calling it a custom forge client is somewhat of a misnomer um, because a forge client is fully customizable so you use the I believe it's called the forge mod loader for 1.16 it's called fabric but I would not recommend PVPing on 1.16 just stick to 1.8.9. Um, but with a Forge client, you can add whichever mods you like. Um, there are some quote-unquote starter packs, if you will, like the Laby mod or 5zig. And in fact, GamerBoy80, the Bedwars YouTuber, he used Laby mod for a very long time. 
Um, and he only switched to Luna quite recently. Maybe it's been about a year or something. I'm not too sure. Um, but do bear in mind if you choose to go down this route that you should read the rules on the server if you're going to do this because some mods that you download might not be allowed on all servers. Um, a, quite a prominent example of this is Free Luck, which isn't allowed on Hypixel. It is a mod that's included in Bad Line and Luna, but I believe those clients disable it when you go on Hypixel. So um, if you're going to use Forge, just remember that you have to manually disable Free Luck when you're going on Hypixel. Um, you know, if you don't want to get banned. So anyway, if you want to be in full control of which mods that you have, I would recommend making your own Forge client. If you don't care too much about customizability, that took a while to say, and you'd like an easy to download option that contains everything that you need or most of the things that you need, I would recommend the Luna client or I guess the other ones if they run better. Okay, so you'll also need a server to practice some of the techniques that I'll talk about later on. Um, and sure, you can practice whilst playing whichever minigame you choose. That could be Bed Wars, Sky Wars, UHC, or whatever. But you might find that it will take you a longer time to improve. Um, game sense is just as important for those games as PvP is. But you do need at least a moderate level of skill in PvP to help with game sense. Um, there's servers dedicated to this known as practice servers, and the ones that I would recommend are Mind Men Club, PvP Lands, and Luna. These servers each have a wide range of dual options, including Build UHC, Classic, Boxing, Sumo, and Pop PvP. Each mode will help you develop a certain skill. My server of choice is usually Mind Men Club, although I do go on each of the servers from time to time. Luna and Mind Men Club both have region specific servers, so they've got EU, they've got North America, and I believe they've got like Asia Pacific. But in order to ensure that my ping is low, I usually play on the EU versions of Luna or Mind Men Club. Unfortunately, PvP lands is North America only, and so my ping on there is relatively poor. But its selling point is that it has a bot dueling mode, which I do quite like, actually. Um, as the name suggests, you can duel bots on, um, I believe, like, Soup PvP or um, I think Pot PvP as well. Unfortunately, they haven't figured out how to program rods and stuff, and I can imagine that would be quite difficult. So, yeah, you can't use it for that. Um, I should clarify what ping is actually. So it's basically a measure of the time between like you doing something. So that could be like pressing the mouse button to hit someone and the server's response to this. So the hit registering in the game. Um, and obviously you'd want this to be as low as possible so that your hits are registered almost immediately. I would say that a ping below 60 milliseconds is good. From 61 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds, that would be playable, but it's not ideal. That's around what I get on Hypixel, actually I get around 100, 110 depending on um, if I'm in Newcastle or London. Um, but anything above that can be very annoying to play with and I know some of my Asian friends would uh, conquer. Now to go back to the subject of practice servers, I would categorize each dual mode for the following skill. Build UHC can help you develop your skills with a fishing rod as well as tactical healing. Classic duels can also help develop your skills with a rod, but there's usually less of a healing element than with build UHC. You generally only have the basic PvP tools, um, i.e. a sword, a bow, and a fishing rod. Sumo duels can help you learn W tapping, and pot PvP lets you practice PvP with speed effects. There are others too, perhaps for more niche skills which you can discover on your own. Um, I'll be using some of these servers to demonstrate different things later on in the video. So when it comes to clicking, there are three different ways of doing it, but unfortunately I'm not very skilled at all three. I can do two of them, but they are as follows. Normal clicking, butterfly clicking, and jitter clicking. Normal clicking is probably what the average Minecraft player uses, and that's the way I clicked for... I got Minecraft in 2012, so from about 2012 all the way until early 2020, I would say. Um, that's pretty much the length of time I was normal clicking. As it's, I mean, it is as it sounds, you simply click the left mouse button as fast as you can with one finger. And despite what the name implies, it is actually a very good clicking form since you can be quite precise with your aim, and aim is very important. Most people get between 7 to 9 CPS clicking this way, 
Um, and you can also do this with more or less any mouse. Um, I know there's a big deal in the Minecraft community about mice, and it is unfortunate about the advantage it may give you, but if you get good with normal clicking, you will not have much trouble. Um, but if you are going to use this method, the key thing is to ensure that your aim is precise and that you've got some of the movement techniques, which I'll talk about later in the video, uh, down to a T. Butterfly clicking is generally what I use the most now, although I'll sometimes alternate between it and normal clicking, depending on the situation. It essentially involves two fingers on the left mouse button in an alternating fashion. So essentially, you click with one finger, and then as that finger releases, your other finger clicks, as so on and so on. So this should give you a much larger CPS count than normal clicking, and in fact, it probably gives you the highest CPS of all the methods. I'm not particularly good at clicking fast, so I get around 13 to 16 CPS when butterfly clicking, which is more than fine for most of my purposes. But I have seen more proficient users get between 18 to 20 CPS clicking this way. It's potentially less harmful than the next clicking method, which is jitter clicking. At one point, I did inadvertently use this method for a short period of time, but it did start to hurt my wrist, probably because I was doing it improperly, but... I never really came back to it. I've heard that it shouldn't put too much strain on your wrist if you do it properly, unlike me. But at the end of the day, playing you know playing too much PvP or playing too much of any video game, um, whichever method you use is harmful to your health. So do remember to take breaks, exercise, and you know do stuff other than playing video games. Um, and developing RSI or repetitive strain injury is not out of the realm of possibility. Anyway, with that tangent aside, this clicking method requires you to tense up your forearm until basically your entire, just your hand and fingers vibrate. Um, there isn't much in the way of actually clicking with your finger, like, you don't consciously, like, press with your finger. It just kind of happens because of the vibrations that occurs when you tense your arm that hard. Um, this method is probably the most difficult to aim with, um, it takes a lot of practice because it's difficult to move your arm when it's tense like that. Um, and most people who click this way will only make contact with their mouse with their fingertips, so they're... in a way it's quite light on the mouse, I guess. Um, ultimately, I wouldn't recommend this method, but it's very popular and a lot of good PvPers use it, so, you know, if it works for you, then go for it. Um, just on a final note, I'd like to say that getting a high CPS isn't that important. In fact, a CPS of 8 can serve you very well. I believe Technoblade, um, he might be washed now, I suppose you could say, but like, when he was playing more PvP, he was only doing about 7 to 8 CPS and he was still very good. Um, but despite that, people do think higher CPS equals better PvP, which it most certainly doesn't. Um, it plays a part, sure, but the next two factors are arguably more important. As I alluded to this before, movement plays a huge role in PvP. The most important and basic part of this is to strafe, as opposed to always moving in a straight line. I'm sure you can imagine why this is useful. It makes it harder for your opponent to aim at you if you're constantly moving. Just be sure not to move yourself into a position where you can't also hit them. Try to switch things up a bit too, constantly doing a predictable circle or something like that. It won't help you and your opponent will figure out what you're trying to do pretty quickly. One of the biggest things in Minecraft PvP is that you'll be able to build up a good combo if you can minimize the amount of knockback which you're taking, uh, whilst maximizing the amount of knockback your opponent is taking. I'm obviously doing this legitimately of course, no uh, vape and DKB or anything like that. With that being said, you should know that when you're running, the first hit always does more knockback than the subsequent hits. But we can exploit this by doing something called sprint resetting, which, as the name suggests, is basically just restarting your sprint after every hit, so that all of your hits maximize the knockback. There's a few ways to do this, but the most effective are block hitting, W tapping, and S tapping. So they all have the basic, like, same mechanics. Um, in the case of block hitting, you should immediately press right click after hitting someone with left click, then go back to hitting with left click and so on. So it's basically just left click, right click, left click, right click. But you have to time it so that the right click is just momentarily after your first hit is registered. 
Um, and be sure not to hold down right click too much because it will slow you down quite a bit and it might make it easier for your opponent. With W tapping it's the same idea but instead of blocking with the right click you should momentarily let go of the W button once your hit is registered you know rather than the right click and then hold down W again otherwise they'll be able to take advantage. S-tapping again works on the same principle, but it's a little bit more tricky and finicky since it can also move you backwards because, you know, S takes you back. Um, and it could take you back outside of the range where you can hit your opponent. So it's best used in speed PvP scenarios as it ensures that you don't get too close to your opponent. So if you imagine if you're just holding like W down running towards your opponent and just swinging, you move forward faster then your opponent will fly back when you hit them. So eventually you could run straight through them and you won't be able to hit them anymore because you're technically behind them. Which is another reason why sprint reset is good. It ensures that you're always in front of your opponent and you don't go like behind them. Um, I guess the timing for all of these methods is very important. Um, and like I've said, if you fail these techniques, the other person can quite easily take advantage. Um, I think this is probably the most difficult thing for new players to adapt to, so I'd suggest a lot of practice, maybe on one of the practice servers that I mentioned before. Now, I don't think there's too much I need to say on aim. You can probably tell it's very important, and really it's just a matter of practice. A lot of YouTubers have said this, so I too will say it. It is much easier to aim if you use your arm rather than your wrist. Your arm gives you way more range to move, and you'll find it more comfortable. Though at first it might be a little bit weird, it was for me. It's probably also better for RSI prevention. Um, I believe RSI takes place in the wrist, but I'm not too sure. Some people might recommend a name trainer, but for the most part I think they're mainly for FPS games where you don't really click at the same speed that you do on Minecraft. There's a difference between like holding the mouse where you just click to shoot for a few seconds and then that's more or less it, and then compared to Minecraft where you have to constantly be clicking, um, the way you aim is a bit different. So I wouldn't recommend an aim trainer for that, or at least a classical aim trainer. Um, but if, if you find that it helps you, then go for it. But I think the most important thing is just to be able to aim whilst clicking at that relatively high speed. But there's no point in clicking 25 ZPS if your aim looks like this. And finally, we should talk about some commonly used items in various PvP game modes. This list isn't exhaustive, but there are some items that I find myself using, plus one that I suck at, so I got a friend to help. You can use fishing rods to stun your opponents, which basically gives you an opportunity to strike them before they can strike you, and thus you can start to build up a combo. The same effect can be achieved with throwable objects such as eggs or snowballs. And you can also do a similar thing with blocks, and you'll see this quite often if you play Bed Wars or Sky Wars. I think that maybe with blocks you've got a little bit more mobility and you can kind of guide people into a direction that is more advantageous to you. Um, but yeah, there's also lava buckets, which you'll find used in UHC, build UHC jewels, and maybe even like Sky Wars or speed UHC or something like that. Um, the idea is basically to momentarily place a lava block into the position that you think your opponent will fall to. So, you know, a little bit of prediction there. And then ideally you can quickly pick it back up to use again later. It's quite a hard skill to master and it will require practice. As you may well know, I suck at it. Um, I should also mention speed potions and slowness potions. If you have speed, you can easily strafe your opponent and it will be harder for them to take advantage of any KB they might deal to you. Combined with S-tapping, this can be a good way to build up a combo. Now guys, I do hope that was helpful. Um, a lot of work went into making this video, so if you could leave a like, comment, maybe even subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, sorry for my inconsistent upload schedule, you know, college is hard. Hard to get motivation when you're constantly doing assessed problem sheets. But that's okay. Um, yes, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.